Which problems? So, uh, starting from uh, 3 to 11, and it's odd. So all four of those charts are exponential. Right. So each different function is merely a transformation of the basic parent graph E or Y equals 2 to the X. Right. So let's take number three. What kind of transformation are we looking at? So, uh, vertical stretch of two? No, there's two shifts. Right on. Uh -huh. So, um, down two and left two? Yeah. Let me just talk about this briefly. I think this will be helpful. Nah. If you have F of negative X, uh -huh. that's a horizontal reflection. If you have negative f of x, that is a vertical reflection. If you have f of x minus c, horizontal shift. If you have f of X minus C outside vertical shift. If you have F of two X horizontal, not stretch, but shrink. And if you have 2, f of x, that is a vertical stretch. There are only these six. Notice what's in common, the horizontal ones. All three of them, the change comes inside the parentheses. Right. The vertical ones... The change comes outside the parentheses. That's the most important thing you can remember. Okay? So, if I have this, f of x equals 2 to the x as the parent function, which is what we have on number 3, Right. Well, then what is f of x equal 2 to the x plus 2? Just that alone. What is that? That is, isn't that f of x plus 2? Yes. Yeah. In other words, what that is is really f of x plus 2. Well... That puts it as a horizontal shift. And since it's x minus c is the standard, then a plus 2 is to the left. So this is 2 units to the left. Now, the minus 2, that is outside the function. What that is, is here's what I have, f of x plus 2 minus 2. That's what I'm looking at. This is horizontal. 
shift. This is vertical shift. Okay? So, what I have is the parent function being shifted two units to the left and two units down. So let's find that graph. Which one is two units down and two units to the left? C. Yeah. And here's the other most important thing. If I'm graphing f of x equals 2 to the x, that's my parent function, it's going to go through this point right there, 0, 1, always. Doesn't really matter what the base is. That could be 12 or 112. It's still going to go through that point because any number to the 0 power is equal to 1. Okay? So this is the point that you search for as to what has been shifted. In other words, we're looking for a point that's been shifted that way, two units, and then that way, two units. And that is clearly C. Notice that the point it normally would have gone through is right there. And that point is now right there. Shifted left two and down two. Okay. So hopefully that'll help. Let's look at number three. Tell me, first of all, what transformations are going on. Same parent function, two to the x. So what do we have? We have a horizontal shift. Of what? In which way? Um, left. No. Two. Well, if it's a negative sign, then it's right. And what about this negative two? What's that do? Um, down two. Which curve goes right to and down to? A. Uh huh. Let's look at number four. Tell me what's going on with number four. What kind of uh, transformations do we have on number four? That's what. What does that represent? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. And which way and by how much? Uh, left. Two. And what does that plus two do? Uh, uh, two. All right. So we want to find our key point which was at 0, 1, and which graph shows that point as being moved left to and up to? Well, it's clearly between those two, right? Those yeah. are the only two that have been moved up to. So which one is moved left to? Um. B. No, remember what the standard is. Oh, it's left. Oh, so D. Standard has to go through that point right there, the unadjusted. So D is left two. Finally, I guess I did these out of order. It doesn't really matter. What's the transformation on that? Um, it's right to up to. And that is that curve right there. 
And really the only way you have of really telling whether it goes left or right is by finding that point. In other words, the parent function always goes through that point, and that point is 0, 1 every time. Not matter what the base is. All right. So let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Which ones were you supposed to do? You weren't going to do every one of them. Which ones? Uh, three through eleven odd. Odd only. Okay. Yeah. So we want to do seven next. Yes. Okay. It's okay. We didn't waste any time. In other words, this is all about transformations and reflections. So if that's your parent function, what is that? Just describe it. So is it inside or outside the function? Outside. Which makes it what? Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Correct. All fun all transformations that are outside the function are vertical. And that helps a lot because there are six transformations. You don't want to remember it as six things. What you want to remember is that there are three vertical and three horizontal. And it's relatively easy to remember three things. Okay. So the original graph is exponential just like every other exponential. In other words, when I graph it, it's hard to tell the difference between 2 to the x, 3 to the x, or 13 to the x. The only thing I know for sure is what is that point? Uh, 0, 1. So I'm going to call that my original graph, y equals 3 to the x. I use y in place of f of x. Same thing. Okay. So, what does g of x look like? So, it's um, to the up 5. Yeah, it's the exact same shape. Only, instead of going through this original point, it goes through this point. And it's the exact same shape. Whoops. I didn't draw that right. Hold on. Now, let's mention one other thing. The original point has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Well, if I'm shifting everything up by 5, then my horizontal asymptote gets shifted up also. So that comes at 5, and my new curve, which is shifted up by 6 units, looks exactly like my red curve, only it's shifted up by five units, which makes it go through this point right there, which is now zero comma six. Okay, so the blue is y equal three to the x plus five. And remember, shifts do not, whether they're horizontal or vertical, they do not change the shape of the graph. What does change the shape of the graph are stretches or shrinks, but, right. not, but not shifts. Okay, number nine. Parent function is e to the x. What's the difference between the parent and the 
transformation? Uh, it's just um, down one. Tell me vertical or horizontal. Vertical. Actually, I guess down one was fine, now that I think about it. All right. E to the X looks just like all the other exponential functions. Goes through the same point, 0, 1. So if we're going to take this and move it down one, it's going to go through that point. And it's horizontal asymptote. Asymptote's going to move down one. So it's going to look just like that. Okay? Okay. All right, number 11. What do we got? We got, boy, they're not doing much here. What's 11? What's the difference between f of x and g of x? So um, it's to the... Ah, hold on. Hold on. I was looking at 10. We're supposed to be looking at 11. Okay. So, yeah. On 11, what's the difference between f of x and g of x? Same question. First of all, tell me if it's horizontal or vertical transformation and in which direction. So it's horizontal uh, right seven. Yes, horizontal shift to the right of seven. The reason shift is an important word is because you have the following word. You have shift, you have stretch, and you have shrink. And they each mean something different. So you want to say that is a horizontal shift. In other words, if 2 to the x looks like that, take that point, move it horizontally to the right by 7. So now it's at 7, 1. My asymptote did not change, and the shape does not change, because it's a shift. It's not a stretch or a shank. Right. About 13. So um, then we go to 27. It was just through the... You're not supposed to do 13? No. Okay. Too bad. 13 was a good one. Uh, let's see. 27. I got to go to a different page, I assume? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, I don't know that I've ever done this. How do I go to the next page? Um, the scroll bar at the bit bottom. We'll move it to the right. On the bottom of the page or the screen. Yeah. yeah. Then there's a scroll bar next to the page. Ah, okay. Sorry. I this have, one. I have done that before, but all right. So, okay. Now we're into the log. Same thing. Those same six rules that I gave you apply to all functions. It doesn't matter if they're log functions, algebraic functions, or trig functions. They could be any of them. The key thing is, is that you do the transformation correctly. So you got two things going on there. What are they? What's the first thing? What's the three mean? So it means um, to, um, it's a vertical stretch. Uh-huh. When it's in front, when it's vertical, if it's greater than one, it's a stretch. If it's between zero and one, it's a shrink. Okay. It's the opposite for horizontal. 
When it's horizontal, if it's greater than one, it's a shrink. If it's between zero and one, it's a stretch. Okay, what else? There's a minus five there. So it's um, down five or horizontal. That's vertical. Shift, or vertical shift of down five. Yeah. That's the way to put it. Vertical shift down five. So I'm going to draw the parent function. And just like exponential functions, log functions all kind of look the same. In other words, if I draw this, you could say that's a log function, but I don't know what base. But they all go through this point, 1, 0, regardless of the base. In this case, that would be y equal, I use the base that we're given, 4. <coughs> okay. And now let's do our shifts in blue. So does it matter which order we do them? Um, the vertical stretch goes first. Actually, it does not matter unless you have reflections. If you have reflections, you have to do those first. In other words, there are six possibilities. And you can actually have a function that has all six. Okay. Well, just do your reflections first, and you can do anything else in whatever order you want. And you can do the reflections in either order if you have both. Just do your reflections first. Well, this doesn't have any reflections, so I can do them in whatever order I want. Now, the shift is going to make this thing kind of skinnier. In other words, it's going to make it kind of like that. Okay? Really? Notice that when x is equal to 1, y is still 0. In other words, the log of 1 is always 0. So even though I multiply it by 3, it's still 0. So it doesn't change that point right there. Still goes through that same point. Now I'm going to subtract 5. So now that point goes down to there, which is 1, comma, minus 5. And I'm going to draw the blue shape without really changing its shape. So that is y equal 3 log base 4 of x minus 5. Really should have used three colors because this last blue line is not the same. The first blue line was just the stretch. The second blue line was both. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, 29 next? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, 28. It's out of the odds now. So it's 27 through 30. Okay. So it's 28. Well, let me think about this for a second. How about we do 30 first and leave 28 and 29 for after that. I want to okay. go. I want to go in the degree of difficulty. Okay, and the reason I want to do that is because whether that base is greater than or less than 1 matters. 
And so far, we've dealt with only numbers greater than one. So let's do all of those. Let's do 30. That's got a base of two. So tell me what the two transformations are. So, um, what's that? It is down to. Is that inside or outside the function? Inside. Which makes it horizontal. Oh. Uh, so it's not up or down. It's left or right. So left two. Okay. So horizontal shift left two. What else? What's that? It's down three. It's vertical shift down three. All right, so what's the parent function? Uh, f of x equals. Um, Actually, they give it to you right there. Yeah. And again, I'm, gra I'm graphing that. It always looks like that. Always goes through that point, 1 comma 0. And from the shape, I can't tell if that's log base 2, log base 7, log base 17. I have no idea. But I'm going to call that y equal log base 2 of x. Okay? Now, do these shifts one at a time. Let's do the first one in blue. So, how do I handle a horizontal shift to the left by two units? So, uh, it's... Take the one point that you know it goes through and move that left by two units. So, it's... Um negative or yeah negative one zero uh -huh. and because it is a shift it does not change the shape it looks pretty much exactly like the other one so this one is merely y equal log base two of x plus two Okay, uh -huh. now we'll change colors to green, and we'll add the minus 3. Well, you've already said that's down 3. So we take that blue point that we know what it is. We move it down to here. What are the coordinates on that point? Um, negative 1. Uh, negative three. Uh -huh. Now we're going to draw a green curve exactly the same shape as the red and the blue because shifts do not change shape. And there's your answer. Remember, Stretches and shrinks change shapes. Shifts do not, regardless okay. of whether they're horizontal or vertical. All right, now let's go back and look at the hard ones. Log base one third. Now, the reason that's hard is because you never see it. Let's talk about exponentials for a moment. If I have y equals 3 to the x, 
It looks like that, right? Yeah. You can't tell. I mean, that's either 3 to the X, 300 to the X, 3 million to the X, or 17 to the X. But if I make that base less than 1, say I make it 1 half to the X, then the curve looks like that. Just making the number less than one makes it pretty much kind of reflect over the y-axis. Okay. Same thing with logs. In other words, remember what logs are. Logs are the reflection of the exponential function. So, let me go through it. This is a little strange. So, if I wanted to graph y equal log base 3 of x, which is like that, I would do it by graphing y equal x and reflecting that over that. So that blue line is that. Right. So the same thing happens when you change the base to one half where it goes like that. That's the same as changing the base to one half on the log function. So it's going to go the other way. It's going to go, um, let's see, it reflects over that line. So it goes kind of like that. Ah, I think. Hold on a second. Let me start from scratch, confusing myself. All right. So if I had that, that is y equal one-third to the x power. And I know that log to the one-third power of x is the inverse of that. Well, how do you draw the inverse? First of all, let's draw that, y equal x, and then reflect that red line about the blue line. Well, that point's got to be on there. So I reflect it about the blue line. I think do this, yeah. So the green line represents the log of a function that has a base less than one. Let's, okay. Let's be more specific. I know exactly what I mean now. Okay, if I have this, that is y equal to a log greater than 1, like 3, of x, okay? doesn't matter whether that's a 3, a 2, or a 17. It's going to look like that. But if I make that number less than 1, say I have log of 1 third, of x, basically what it does is it makes it look like that, much in the same way that exponential functions change their, they look more like reflections when you make the number less than 1. So okay. that's our parent function, the blue, for 28. That is that right there. 
Okay. Now, there's two things happening. There's this negative sign, and there's this plus six. Always treat your negative signs first. What is that neg first negative sign doing? To reflect it's over which axis? Is it a horizontal or a vertical reflection? Uh, well, it's over the y-axis. That's horizontal. You see okay. why? In other words, this is important because rather than having to memorize horizontal reflections as being over the y-axis, you just have to remember that anything inside the function is horizontal. So if you have a negative sign inside the function, that's horizontal. Horizontal is a reflection over the y-axis. Do you see why? Yeah. And vertical reflection is a reflection over the x-axis. Just take your hand and move it over the x-axis. You're moving it vertically. You're moving it from the top to the bottom. If you move it over the y-axis, you're moving your hand from the right side to the left side. All right. Okay. So this first negative sign is a horizontal reflection of the blue line. So let's do that in green. There's a horizontal reflection of the blue line, correct? Yes. So that is y equal log base one-third of negative x. Now, we have one last thing to do. Move it up six. What are we going to do to move it up six? Um, okay, let's go back and uh, I forgot to do this. But let's go back and define our key points. What is this point right here? Oh, zero or one zero. So what's this point right here? Negative one zero. Now move that point up six. So it's at negative one six. Perfect. There's negative one six. Our curve has to look like the green curve exactly, only it's going to go through that point. There's our answer, the purple curve. And it is a, it, it says describe it. So it's a reflection over Y. Yeah. And then it's a shift up by six. Yep. So, now that we've done, now that we've figured out how to handle bases less than one, let's do 29. So the parent function, let's use the same color scheme here. Parent function looks like this. Because it's a base of one fifth. In other words, that function right there looks like my red function. Remember, when the base is less than one, it kind of goes down. When the base is greater than one, it goes up. What two things are being done to that? So it's... Um... Start from left to right, always. Actually, don't start from left to right. Start from reflections, always. So it's a reflection over the x-axis? Okay. 
So the first thing I'm going to graph in blue is this function right here. Well, a reflection over the x-axis makes it look an awful lot like a normal log curve. Yeah. So that is y equals minus log to the one-fifth base of x. Now, what is the minus 7? What kind of transformation is that? Uh, it's right 7. Correct. Horizontal because it's inside the parentheses and it's right seven. So I'm going to take my blue chart, not going to change its shape. I'm just going to move it seven. I happen to know that that point is one comma zero. So I'm going to move it seven to the right, which makes it eight comma zero. And I'm going to try to draw the blue curve only as green. Now, this green curve has a vertical asymptote. What's the equation of that asymptote? Um, it's at... Uh, when... Uh, Where was it originally? What's the equation? What's the equation of the y-axis? That's x equals zero. Oh, yeah. So what's the equation of this dotted green line? Uh, x equals um, seven. Uh-huh. In other words, is all the asymptotes move exactly the same amount as your horizontal shift. It doesn't move it to 8, it moves it to 7. I still go through that point, but notice that the original point was one unit to the right of the vertical asymptote. Yep. All right. Dimitri, what else you got? So the next one is uh, 35. And 36. Okay, so this is a little different. This is where they tell us the transformation, and they want us to give them the equation. The last section, that was they gave us the equation, and they wanted us to tell them the transformation. So this is the opposite. So if this is the parent function, take that function, translate it two units down, followed by a reflection in the y-axis. So... Which one do you do first, despite what they say? Uh, reflection. Always. Regardless of whether it's horizontal or vertical. If you have both, it doesn't matter. But always do your reflections first. So what's the first one if I do reflection only? Instead of 5 to the x, what is it? What is that thing to the right of the X? Looks like a plus sign. Oh, that's part of a semicolon. Now I get it. Okay. So the original function is this. <laughs> when you get to calculus, you'll see plus signs like that. They have meaning, but that's not what that is. That's a semicolon. <laughs> so if I said reflect that over the y-axis, is that a horizontal or a vertical reflection? A horizontal. 
Okay, if it's horizontal, does the negative sign go inside the function or outside the function? Inside. So what does it become? Um, f of x equals 5 to the negative x. Perfect. So that's a reflection over the y-axis. Now, translate that by two units down. So it's um, minus two. Yeah, outside the function. In other words, it's not minus two in that exponent. It's minus two outside the function. Now, I'm not sure why they worded it like this. It's almost like they were trying to trick you up. And sometimes it doesn't matter whether you do your reflection first or last, but sometimes it does. When you are doing your reflection vertically and you have a vertical shift, it matters. Or the other way around. Uh, it's just safest to do your reflections always first. So when they say followed by a reflection, eh, do the reflection first. It's going to end up the same here. In other words, if I did the shift first, I would have that. And then if I do the reflection, I'll just do that. But sometimes it doesn't always end up the same. Half the times it makes a difference. So you have to be very, very careful to make sure you always do your reflections first. Other than that, nothing else matters. Whether you do, you know, all, how you do your shifts and your stretches and your shrinks, you can do those in any order you want as long as you do all of your reflections first. Okay. So, 36. I'm gonna graph that function, f of x. Notice that that number two thirds is less than one. What does that mean for our graph? Instead of going from low left the upper right goes this way, merely because that number is less than one. However, it doesn't change that point. That point is always zero comma one. Notice that any number to the zero power is equal to one. So two thirds to the zero power is still one. So I'm still going through that point. It's just the shape is different. When you take a number less than one and you start exponentiating it, it gets smaller. You know, square it, it becomes four ninths. If you cube it, it becomes eight twenty sevenths. So it gets smaller and smaller as x gets bigger and bigger. So that's that function right there. Okay. Now, reflect it in the x. Is that vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Reflect it in the x. Take your hand, put it above that x-axis, and then turn it over on the bottom of the x-axis. That's a vertical reflection. Make sure you get this. That's what it looks like after being vertically reflected. See why that's not a horizontal reflection? See why that's a vertical reflection? Yeah. And the only reason I, I pick on that is because I want all of my transformations that are outside the function to be vertical. I want all my transformations that are inside the function to be horizontal. 
and reflections happen to fit that perfectly. In other words, if I'm reflecting over the x-axis, that is the same as y equals negative two-thirds to the x. Notice that that negative sign is outside the function. That makes it a vertical reflection. My blue line is a vertical reflection. Followed by a stretch factor of six. <laughs> a vertical stretch factor of six and a translation four units to the left. <coughs> now, we're done with our reflections. So we can go in any order we want. <coughs> First thing let's do, vertical stretch by a factor of six. So I'm taking my blue line, and I'm vertically stretching it by a factor of six. That means it must go through that point right there. In other words, this point was zero comma This must be zero comma minus six. A vertical stretch is going to look like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now the last one, which I'll draw in purple, is a translation four units to the left. That's a shift. We do not change the shape of the green curve. We only change the point that we know it goes through. Now we know it has to go through this point. Four units to the left, same exact shape as the green line, and the purple line is our answer. And the only point that we moved around, notice we took that point, moved it to there with our reflection, and we moved it to there with our stretch, and then we moved it to here, with our horizontal shift. So whenever you're dealing with these exponential functions or logarithmic functions, you only have one point that you know you start with. Always label that and make sure you do with that point what is called for. Now, when I have a stretch, that point, the y-axis, gets multiplied by 6. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. why, in other words, I did the reflection first to put that point at 0, comma, minus 1. And then I got to multiply that by 6 to do a vertical stretch by a factor of 6. So that point right there becomes this point right here. And then I just have to move it to the left without stretching or shrinking. I'm just shifting. Okay. All right. Is that it, Dimitri? Uh, you got more? No. Yeah, we got. Yeah. We got five more minutes. Okay. So then the last three are, are uh, thirty-nine through forty-one. Okay. We may not have time to do all three of them, but we'll do as many as we. All right. Okay. So this is pretty much right for the function. So let's just do it. There's no reflections on 39, so we don't have to worry about order. The only time you have to worry about order is if there's a reflection, okay? 39's got a vertical stretch. It's got a, a shift of five units down. 
So if that is my starting function, apply the first one. Like I said, order doesn't matter. So what's a vertical stretch by a factor of six look like? So it's um, log base six. Oh, we know six times log base six of x. Yeah, it's outside the function because it's vertical. Now, what's a translation, which means shift five units down? I'm disappointed in them that they don't use the terminology properly. Followed by a shift five units down. How does that change it? Uh, so y equals six log base six x of x. Um, Minus five. Okay, good. Let's do 40. Okay, so. First do the uh, reflection. It's over the x-axis. Is that vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Okay, so what's the first? The, the, so. The first change that would reflect just a reflection over the x-axis. Uh, so it's log base 5 of negative x? That would be inside the function. Oh, so it's a negative uh, log base 5 of x. You get what I'm saying when I say inside or outside the function? Yeah. Okay. This is a vertical reflection, therefore it's outside the function. Followed by a translation of nine units left. That's a, what they mean is a horizontal shift of nine units left. So is that inside or outside the function? Uh, inside. Okay, so what is it? Uh, it's negative or yeah log base five times it's not times it's log of oh of x minus wait no, x yeah okay so plus plus nine Okay, and finally, 41. Do the third. Oh, there is a reflection. Let's do the reflection first. What's the reflection going to be? Is that horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. So does it go inside or outside? Inside. So what is it? It's log of negative x. That's inside. Right. Okay, so that takes care of the reflection. Now we got to go three units left and two units up. Now this gets a little tricky. Let's go three units left first. Okay. So it's um, ne or, yeah, negative x. Minus three. Yeah. That's how you do it. You put it in parentheses. Notice what's going on here. Here's my horizontal reflection, and there's my horizontal shift to the left of three units. But I need the parentheses. In other words, what that ends up being without the parentheses, which is the way you end up showing it in the long run, is minus x minus 3. That is a horizontal reflection and a shift of 3 units to the left, not the right. Yeah. 
And it all has to do with the fact that I needed these parentheses right here. That's why I said it was a little tricky. When you're dealing with horizontal reflections combined with horizontal shifts. Now, the last one, two units up, that's easy. What's that? Um, X. And then it's plus two. Yeah, outside the function. But this yep. part is definitely a little tricky. And if they'd have given you this to start with, you'd have had to put the parentheses in. That's equal to that. And now that's a, that's a shift to the left, not the right. So it definitely kind of matters. Um, this is the trickiest part of these transformations is when you have a situation like 41. Okay. Okay. All right, Dimitri. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. Yep. Talk to you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.